Welcome everyone that's joining. We'll get started here in about 30 seconds to a minute just to let some more folks join the presentation. Okay, I think that's been about a minute. I, it's 6.02, so in the interest of time, uh, we've got a lot of information to go through. So I'll start going through some of the ground rules for the meeting. So the meeting format this evening, um, we'll have presentations with speakers, then we'll, you'll be able to ask questions via the Q&A feature. So if you're looking at your Zoom, uh, there, as I said, there's a little Q&A button over on the right. Uh, you can select that and type in your questions as we go. So if we're on a slide, you have a question on it, go ahead and type it in. And then we'll pause during each section of the presentation to answer those questions. Uh, and if we can't answer and we have to do some a little bit more background information, we'll let you know and then we'll be able to answer those questions. And the presentation and exhibits and the additional questions that we can't answer tonight, we'll have out on the website, uh, which is at norsplit.com slash landscape. And then we're also asking for additional comments to be submitted at info at norsplit.com. And those comments are requested by December 10th. And those comments will then be incorporated into the final, will be reviewed and addressed and put back out on the website for what's been incorporated into the final landscape and aesthetic plans. So for our meeting agenda this evening, we'll do some welcome and introductions. We'll give a construction update We'll go through the noise barrier and color texture results. We'll go through the aesthetic and enhancement implementation plan, the AEIP, a land, the landscape and side slope plan overview, next steps, and then we'll adjourn. So we wanna all welcome you. Uh, there's quite a lot large panelists this evening. Uh, my name's Erica Johnson. I'm with h and I'm working on behalf of NDOT as a public liaison and helping be the facilitator at the meeting this evening. And I'm Mohammed Siddiqui with Superior Construction. Um, I'm the design build coordinator and I'll be happy to present the construction update in today's uh, webinar. Ken, I think you're muted. I'm Ken Boyce, I'm with Ratio Architects and I'll be presenting the AEIP and uh, the landscape plans. I'm Kia Gillette. I'm with HNTB and the environmental lead for the project, and I'll be moderating questions this evening. And then for those that did join, if you do have your neighbors or others that are asking um, and as you're talking to them, just to let them know that there are three other meetings that were out there. You should have received your postcard. Those dates were on there as well. But just to remind you, the next meetings are one tomorrow at 6 p.m., another one on the 23rd at noon, and November 30th at noon. And then also, if they do have any other questions and they're not able to join, the presentation materials, as I said, will also be out on the website for them to review. And with that, I will turn it over to Mohammed. Thank you, Erica. So as you all must be aware, um, um, the construction of the project started about November of last year. And uh, let me start with a quick project overview. The project involves total reconstruction of the I-65, I-70 North Split interchange. And this involves reconstruction uh, of over 40 bridges. There's uh, precisely 48 bridges that are completely being redone. And um, when the project is completed, it will um, solve some of the biggest safety problems on the current alignment. And it'll remove some of the operational deficiencies, which will lead out to easing of congestion of traffic and bottlenecks. Also part of the project is a significant aesthetic and design improvement package, and uh, which Ken will be talking later in this presentation. Um, also, um, when the project is completed, there will be completely new lighting and signage on the uh, project right away. Um, so far, um, after the completion of the design and uh, the construction that has been progressing over the last several months, the first major milestone that was achieved was the completion of the Michigan Collector Distributor Ramp. As you can see on your screens, on the upper right-hand corner, the picture is of the newly completed 
pavement on the Michigan CD RAM. Um, this was opened to traffic in the first week of October, and uh, it is currently available for use in its final configuration. Um, as we are still going through some uh, maintenance of traffic and traffic restrictions, there are truck restrictions in place um, or leading into the downtown area. Um, the eastbound Ohio Street leading to Pine Street, which was closed for the demolition of the bridges over the CSX Railroad, will be opened up uh, right after Thanksgiving. Um, and, and construction will continue throughout winter as well. Um, the Ohio Collector Distributor Ramp um, is currently shut down, but as part of our commitment to the project, one of the two ramps between Michigan and Ohio will be kept open at all times. And um, this will be also completed and open back up as quick as possible. Next slide, slide please. So um, as I talked about earlier, there is over 48 bridges that are completely uh, demolished and will be reconstructed as part of this project. On your screens, you can see the names of all the side streets that will be getting new bridges, Alabama Central College, Commerce, St. Clair, Vermont, Michigan, 10th Street, Lewis Street, New York Street, Market Street, and Washington Streets. Also the um, big picture that you see on your screens is an isometric aerial view of the uh, interchange itself. And you can see the newly constructed piers that will be um, getting a new bridge, which will be the longest span bridge of the project with over 800 feet and a lot of aesthetic features that Ken will be talking about. Also, in order to minimize, uh, sorry, back up, I just have one more thing. Um, also to minimize the impact on the traveling public and the surrounding neighborhoods, um, there's a lot of construction that is happening offline. And what we mean by that is any construction work that could be uh, completed without disturbing the current flow of the traffic is being undertaken utilizing those open spaces between roadways. And once that is completed, um, we'll be able to expedite and finish the construction on time. With that, Erica, I'll uh, give it back to you. Thank you, Mohammed. I'm going to give an update of the noise barrier color and texture results. Um, part of the final design, next slide, was to finalize the noise barrier uh, 3W, which is from Lewis Street to Commerce. You can see there in the orange. Part of the noise barrier color and texture the benefited property owners were sent a postcard in early June. Go to the next slide. And for retaining wall or noise barrier wall 3W and for 3Es. 3Es just further east from Commerce to the Valley. And from these postcards that were submitted, can you go to the next slide? Community selected that pattern one ashlar stone and the color one gray, which is up on our right-hand side here as well. And you can see that these colors, we had three different options on the postcards and these were the ones that were selected. Uh, we're anticipating the construction to begin in summer of 2022. And with that, I will turn this over to Kia to provide some questions that we've had. Yeah, we're gonna take a minute to see if anybody has any questions. And, and just as a reminder, if you do have questions, if you go to the bottom of your screen, there is a Q&A button and you can type your questions in there. At this point, I'm not seeing any, so we will keep moving with the presentation. Um, there will be additional opportunities for questions as we move along, though. So uh, thank you, Kia. I'll uh, uh, pick up here with the aesthetic and enhancement implementation plan uh, overview. Uh, next slide, please. The aesthetic and enhancement implementation plan uh, it sh shows the uh, how the aesthetic design guidelines uh, were developed during the environmental planning process. 
uh, and uh, uh, the aesthetic design guidelines um, show how the um, uh, show the commitments were made during an environmental planning process uh, are to be implemented in the final design. Uh, the the uh, It further develops the aesthetic elements of the project based upon the final infrastructure design, such as heights, widths, lengths of constructed elements, the construct, and, and then constructability. Um, so the AEIP takes those design guidelines and uh, implements them relative to the final infrastructure design and the constructability issues, determining the best construction methods given the materials and final infrastructure design. The AEIP was completed by the design build team. The design guidelines were, were uh, completed by a team of, uh, of uh, professionals prior to the selection of the superior design team. Uh, the AEIP includes uh, things like underpass treatments, retaining wall and bridge treatments, lighting and landscaping. Next slide, please. Um, like the aesthetic design guidelines, the AEIP is broken into two general areas, uh, infrastructure elements, uh, such as hardscape walls, piers, lighting, underpasses, and construction items uh, associated with bridges and roadway. Uh, the landscaping elements uh, and uh, things like the plantings within the project area, such as the side slopes, interchanges, and the um, west, east, and south legs of the, of the interstate. The construction of on some of the inf infrastructure elements has begun. Uh, you've seen the, uh, a, a number of them in place, I'm sure, for those that are local and uh, familiar with the area. have seen some of the, uh, the enhancements uh, already built. Other infrastructure elements uh, and plantings uh, will be included in, in future work uh, that will happen over the next year or so. Next slide, please. Uh, at this point, we're going to we're going to go over the uh, AEIP infrastructure elements and talk about them in a little bit more detail. Next slide, please. The, um, this, the uh, design the design guidelines uh, address the underpass construction of bridge openings. Um, and uh, the construction has begun at some of the in underpasses. Most of this work will occur. Uh, once the bridge construction is complete. So on the, the image on the right of the St. Clair Street Bridge is partially constructed. You're seeing some of the uh, aesthetic enhancements in place. Next slide, please. Uh, this is a, an image of, of, uh, of one of the elevations of one of the bridge uh, uh, overpasses that was uh, provided within the design guidelines. So this is an image from the design guidelines that the uh, uh, superior uh, design build team used to develop uh, more specific plans for the bridge over uh, the bridges within the project. Next slide, please. Uh, so the AEIP, or the Aesthetic Enhancement Implementation Plan, uh, was used as a tool to translate the design guidelines into the specifics of the uh, project that's being proposed, was proposed by the superior design build team. This is a represent, representation of the 10th Street Bridge, what was classified as a major gateway bridge, uh, single span structure at, at 10th Street. So uh, within, within this document, you can see it's very similar to the design guidelines that were published uh, as part of the RFP process for, that Superior responded to. So the, the monuments uh, on the, at the abutments uh, for major gateways uh, are, is very similar to what was published in the design guidelines. The treatment of the structure itself is very similar. Next slide, please. So we have a series of the bridges represented uh, graphically here to depict uh, actual conditions that are going to be, uh, have been built or are being built currently. Central Avenue uh, bridge opening here. Again, another single span, major gateway structure. Uh, this is the the drawings that were prepared as a part of the AEIP process and uh, is, is uh, currently what is uh, in the scope of work to be built. Next slide, please. So this is uh, another representation of a bridge uh, elevation uh, for College Avenue. 
um, again, major uh, gateway with uh, monuments at the abutment walls. So we have four of these at each of these bridges, uh, uh, including College Avenue. Next slide, please. And then this is the Washington Street Bridge, an elevation of it. Um, so you can see that uh, this is a much longer span bridge, a little bit different character, not quite as tall as some of the other bridges. Uh, and it also has a, well, some longitudinal slopes, so you can get a fairly ac accurate sense of, of what the actual built condition is going to look like. Next slide, please. So the aesthetic design guidelines uh, identified special paving treatments for walks through the underpasses also. So you can see in the in this, uh, image on the right side that uh, there's uh, uh, some specialty pavement uh, that was proposed uh, to be under the bridges, uh, unit pavers that uh, uh, create a little higher uh, quality experience for the pedestrian. Some of these underpasses get to be kind of long. So there was an effort on, uh, that put forth to try to make those experiences as pleasant as possible. Next slide, please. So the AIP then uh, have made refinements to the to the uh, paving patterns and and uh, enhancements under the bridges, and we have finalized the paver materials and patterns uh, after reflecting upon uh, issues such as constructability. Next slide, please. The aesthetic design guidelines also identified specialty lighting treatments for the walks uh, through the underpasses. Uh, there's some up lighting that uh, is uh, on a, a number of the features, the monuments, as well as some of the piers. And then there's some down lighting actually under the underpasses too that light the walk surface and the, and the walls, uh, above the walls themselves. Next slide, please. So the AIP went through a process uh, where we uh, actually selected the actual fixtures uh, that are consistent with the character established within the design guidelines. Um, and uh, this is a, an example of a Vega LED compact floodlight that uh, will be used on the project. And the images on the right um, uh, reflect uh, some of the pictures that have actually been uh, selected also. Next slide, please. The uh, design guidelines also address the piers that you saw in Mohammed's uh, presentation, uh, some of which have been built. Um, and so the, the design guidelines laid out some requirements for uh, some dimensional uh, limitations, as well as the general character of the piers themselves have some reveals in them uh, to create some interest and some character. Next slide, please. So the AEIP, uh, finalized, refined and finalized the, the character of those peers. Again, very similar to the design guideline image. We dealt with uh, some very specific uh, dimensional uh, realities that uh, were part of the project. A little different proportion on some of the peers, but the, the reveals and the character and so forth are all very similar to the, to the quality of the design that was put forth in the design guidelines. Next slide, please. So uh, as a part of the process, Superior Construction uh, oversaw the construction of some full-size um, uh, mock-ups of, uh, of the piers. You can see the reveals uh, that are uh, uh, were mocked up and uh, the mock-ups were done so that uh, we could verify the shapes and dimensions, test and verify finishes and colors. As, as well as texture applications. Next slide, please. And so this is the cap on, on one of the piers, a full-size mock-up of the cap. So again, we went through a similar process with the cap just to confirm that we were comfortable with the, the general character of the uh, things that Superior was about to build. So next slide, please. So this is a one of the piers, a close-up image of one of the piers that's actually been built. Uh, very consistent with the character established in the design guidelines and uh, uh, quite not quite handsome structure and the the reveals add some interest with uh, shadow play and so forth so uh, looks to have been a, a very successful endeavor next slide please 
and uh, also form uh, we developed a mock-up of the uh, MSC wall panels that are going to be present on the retaining walls and bridge abutments. Again, that those mock-ups were used to review textures and colors and uh, so forth. So for the MSC walls. Next slide, please. And this is a, a built installed uh, version of one of those abutment walls that's in place on, at the St. Clair Street Bridge. For those of you that are local probably have seen some of this construction. So uh, it's, it's underway and, and uh, more, more, lots more to come. Next slide. Erica. I'll jump in. This is Kia. We're going to pause for just a second to see if we have any questions that have come in on the Q&A. So far, I'm not seeing any, so we will keep going. So Ken, I'll, I'll pass it back to you. Thank you, Kia. So the the, the next part of, uh, of the overview is for the, the landscape typologies and to help everybody understand uh, where things are tracking relative to the installation of lots of plant material. Uh, there, there will be lots and lots of trees installed as well as uh, native grasses and, and wildflowers uh, to, to enhance the, court, the quality of the, of the corridor. The design guidelines established a number of landscape typologies uh, and uh, the design build team used those typologies to establish a point of beginning for, for the work and, and uh, have prepared planting plans on the basis of the design guidelines. So the, the series of typologies that were established, uh, there's some do not disturb areas uh, uh, along the corridor where existing vegetation is, is is uh, intended to remain undisturbed. There's a type two uh, typology for turf grass or places where we just need to uh, use turf grass, conventional turf grass, like like in our around our homes, um, and uh, uh, for reasons of sight lines and and safety of the motorists and so forth, uh, we have a number of places where we're using turf grass. There's a type three typology, which is described as a side slope plantings. And uh, that depending on the exact specifics of the side slope uh, along the edges of the travel lanes, between the travel lanes and the right of way lines, uh, for the most part, um, it, it will include a series of types of plant materials like shade trees and ornamental trees, shrubs, and then uh, again, native grasses and wildflowers. Type four screen plantings adjacent to the to the sound walls and uh, trying to uh, soften the appearance of the of the larger uh, uh, sound walls. Type five are plantings that are specific to the interchange. Again, very similar to the type three with with uh, uh, shade trees um, and and ornamental trees native grasses and, and wildflowers. And then type six is a, is a typology that's specific to the detention basin that is going to be built north of the interchange. Next slide, please. So this is just an image of a typical uh, uh, meadow condition that uh, native grasses and some, some wildflowers mixed in and intended to be just a representation to help everybody understand what we mean by native grasses and wildflowers. Next slide, please. So the design guidelines uh, established uh, a lot of the criteria and character uh, for the plantings. The, and uh, the, the purple color is a, the type one, do not disturb uh, type, typology. So you can see that in, in the, uh, the graphic here. And then the, the light green is the type three uh, typologies, uh, typology areas that uh, get trees and, and shrubs and uh, uh, native grasses and wildflowers. And then the orangish colored, uh, rust colored is, uh, and the dark green are the typology, uh, interstate typologies. Um, 
and or interchange typology, sorry, um, that are uh, present in the west leg and the interchange. Next slide, please. So then um, we're, we're depicting here a, an actual planting plan for a portion of, uh, of the west leg. And within this representation, you'll see the, the large green circles on the bottom here with the, with the reddish circles. Those are shade trees and ornamental trees that are to be planted. This light green uh, typology is the type 3B uh, typology where the slope, slopes are steep. And we have native grasses and wildflowers. And then the tan color are the do not disturb areas that uh, were represented with the purple in the former graphic. And then this yellow is uh, the type two typology or turf grass. Next slide, please. So we're offering a graphic here for the uh, cross section uh, across uh, at the Old North Side, St. Joseph Historic District areas. And um, uh, this is to help everybody understand sort of three-dimensionally what might be going on uh, with the final improvements. So on the uh, far left side of this cross section, uh, we have a, a do not disturb area uh, at the base of the, uh, of the slope. And so that area will be left undisturbed. And then further up the slope towards the travel lanes, um, the uh, uh, we have a, a type uh, 3B typology, which will be native grasses and, and wildflowers. So then on the right side of the of the image, um, we have a again a do not disturb area. This is the right of way line here. We have a do not disturb area immediately adjacent to the right of way for 19 feet, and then we uh, continue on with a type 3B typology that uh, uh, will be native grasses and wildflowers. And then obviously the travel lanes in the center. So that is, is uh, what is intended for the, that particular location adjacent to the Old North Side and St. Joseph Street. Next slide, please. Uh, so then uh, moving further to the east, uh, Towards the interchange, uh, we have another planting plan uh, illustrating the tree locations and, and uh, quantities roughly. Again, a significant do not disturb area on both sides. And then the rust uh, color and uh, uh, is a uh, type uh, typology five uh, landscape. So next slide, please. Uh, we have in, in the area of the Chad of the March Historic District, we have a, 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 a section cut uh, right away line on the far right side of that section, a tree a landscape preservation zone immediately adjacent to the right away line, new typology, three landscape, uh, then from the tree preserva from the uh, preservation zone out to the travel lanes. So uh, trees, uh, ornamental trees, shade trees, shrubs, native grasses, and, and wildflowers. And in this particular location, you can see we have a, a bit of uh, retaining wall adjacent to the, uh, to the travel lane. Next slide, please. And then the interchange. Uh, so a little bit different ty uh, planting typology here, uh, but uh, we have a typology that's specific to the detention basin, which is going to be built uh, uh, just north of the reconstructed interstate interchange. Next slide, please. So this is an image of, uh, of the uh, detention basin area. You can see a significant planting of, of shade trees and ornamental trees uh, immediately adjacent to the detention basin itself. Um, as well as um, that's all underlaid with uh, native grasses and, and wildflowers. So you have you know, a continuous run of, of uh, native grasses and, and wildflowers and uh, then 
large drifts of densely planted trees uh, uh, within that area. The, the detention basin itself is uh, going to be planted with uh, plant material that is able to withstand inundation, uh, temporary inundation of water during storm events and uh, and not perish. So it's, it's more of the native uh, grasses and forbs and wildflowers, uh, but just subtly different species that are able to withstand it, the temporary inundation with uh, the water. Next slide, please. So another uh, location within the interchange that uh, we've illustrated to show uh, planting intent with trees and uh, shade trees and ornamental trees. And within the interchange, the design guidelines established a grid pattern for the trees to be planted on the grid. And, uh, and so we're following through with that. Uh, there's uh, type three type uh, typology within much of this area, which native grasses, wildflowers. Throughout most of the interchange, you'll see the ground plane planted with the native grasses and wildflowers. In some cases, we have um, uh, turf type uh, grasses that will be mowed on uh, uh, a somewhat regular basis to, uh, in areas where we have drainage swells that need to be maintained, as well as sight line issues for the safety of the motorists. Uh, we uh, will use turf grasses and then the uh, native grass and uh, wildflower areas in, in uh, some locations uh, where we, we limit planting of trees in some areas for safety reasons, obviously, but the verge of the roads and so forth uh, for, for motorist safety, we, we hold the trees back from the travel lanes. Next slide, please. Uh, a section, uh, you can see the location of this, where this section is cut uh, near Mass Ave uh, in the uh, south uh, west uh, corner, if you want to call it that, of the interchange. And starting at the, the far left side of that uh, section, we have turf grass, uh, a walk, more turf grass. So a wide swath of, of uh, essentially mown lawn uh, in, in that particular location. And in the center, uh, we have a significant planting of native grasses wildflowers uh, and then ornamental and shade trees. And on the right side of that image, uh, we have more uh, type two typology turf grass where we have a drainage swale that needs to be maintained. And then we have uh, type five typology where we're not planting trees for motorist safety. Next slide, please. Uh, and then yet another uh, area of the interchange, we have illustrated uh, plantings uh, for it, uh, very similar to the other areas of the of the uh, proposed improvement. So I won't go into a great bit of detail about it, but same typologies as we've discussed on the other other areas. Next slide, please. And then we have a section that's cut uh, uh, essentially from the Monon uh, trail on the right side of that image and, and then across some of the travel lanes or up to the travel lanes on the left side. So right away line on the right side, type two typology grasses, Monon trail, type two typology, typology two turf grass. Uh, and then uh, we begin with uh, type five uh, typology plantings um, which is native grasses, wildflowers, uh, shade trees, and ornamental trees. And then on the left side here, we have again type 5B, which uh, re restricts the tree plantings. Next slide, please. So east leg of the uh, proposed improvements, uh, design guidelines again, establish the general character. Next slide, please. And we have an illustration of a portion of that area, uh, the proposed plantings. Again, similar to many of the plantings on the West Leg, uh, lots of uh, shade and ornamental trees being planted. 
uh, lots of uh, native grass and, and wildflowers being planted, some zones where trees are being held back for motorist safety, and then some um, planting of, of turf grasses uh, where we need to have maintenance access for drainage swales and the like. And then a large area on the north side of this stretch of, of the 70 uh, East Lake. And uh, a bit of a unique situation here with a sound wall. So uh, we'll, I'll speak to that a bit more in the section. So next slide, please. So this is a section that's cut through that, that journal area. And uh, um, I'll start on the right side, the right away line, again, type two turf grass uh, plantings, and then type three plantings um, that, that take us on up to the, the edge of the travel lanes of uh, native grasses and, uh, and wildflowers. And on the left side of this section, starting at the right away line, turf grass, and then um, type three uh, plantings where we have uh, the shade trees, ornamental trees, shrubs, and native grasses and, and uh, wildflowers underneath. And then uh, we get into a situation here where we have a, a sound wall in this particular location. So the design guidelines established a, a little different planting uh, requirement uh, adjacent to the sound walls to help soften the appearance of the sound walls. So a little bit different kinds of plant material, but again, lots of trees, uh, shrubs, uh, native grasses and wildflowers. And then between the sound wall and the actual uh, travel lanes, uh, we have the turf grass. Next slide, please. Um, South leg, uh, landscape typology design guidelines uh, continued to establish the general character. Next slide, please. And an illustration of what that might look like. And this is in the uh, vicinity of the St. Clair uh, underpass. And uh, again, very similar. We have described the same general treatment in the other legs of the, of the interstate uh, improvements. Um, so uh, we'll just go to the section to review. Thank you. Uh, in, uh, in a bit more detail, again, the section is represented here. It's uh, adjacent to the Lockerbie Square Cottage Home Historic Districts. Right away line on the right side with turf grass, uh, a section of turf grass. And then we go into some type three uh, typology where we have trees, uh, shrubs, uh, native grasses and wildflowers and back into some turf grass uh, planting and then back into some type three typologies of native grasses and, and wildflowers. And on the left side, we have right away line, turf grasses, type uh, three plantings of trees, ornamental trees, shade trees, shrubs, wildflowers and native grasses and, and then 5B. Uh, in this particular location of uh, plantings, native grasses and, and wildflowers. Next slide, please. A little further south on the south leg towards the south end of the project. We, um, next slide, please. Uh, a graphic representation of, of the planting intent uh, for that particular area. So here we have the Ohio Street down off ramp uh, coming down and then the, the underpass underneath the interstate uh, transitioning Ohio to Pine Street. So to give you a sense of where we are. Um, similar character of, of uh, development of the, of the uh, plant material the plantings. And uh, you can see there's a, a reasonable amount of, of turf grass plantings in this location for, for a number of trees on, on all sides native grasses, wildflowers. Uh, next slide, please. And here's the section there at the Westminster Historic District. Right away line, turf grass, uh, tree, ornamental trees, shade trees, shrubs, uh, native grasses, wildflowers, and then just to native grass and wildflowers adjacent to the travel lanes. Next slide, please. 
we're going to pause again um, for some questions from the Q&A. And we do have a couple of questions. Uh, first one is, is there a plan to maintain vegetation along the interstate? In the past, the highway right of way became heavily overgrown and unkept. Um, there are plans in place for the first three years um, and then beyond the three years, that would be responsible for maintaining the vegetation. Um, year one after planting is the responsibility of the design build contractor team to maintain the vegetation. And NDOT is currently in discussions with Keep Indianapolis Beautiful for years two and three after planting. Um, nothing's finalized yet, but our NDOT and KIB are talking um, and hope to come to an agreement for that maintenance. Um, and that three year period is important because that three years is the best chance of getting those trees and shrubs established um, so they can grow strong and continue growing in the right of way. Um, at this point, I'm actually going to turn this question over to Ron Taylor from Taylor Seifker Williams Design Group. And Ron was involved in the development of the original aesthetic design guidelines which were kind of the basis for the planting plans that we're talking about today. Um, so Ron, could you maybe talk a little bit about what the intent was and what we heard during our conversations um, with the public as we were developing those guidelines? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, the comment about uh, how sometimes the right of way starts to look overgrown and unkept. And I think a, a lot of times what happens is, you know, those, uh, those very visible public spaces um, end up collecting, you know, the droppings from birds or, or seeds that blow in and things start growing very unintentionally. And from the very early stages of this design process, um, we worked with the community and developed what I would say was, you know, a very intentional uh, planting plan and design strategy um, for the North Split interchange. You know, we heard a lot from the different residents about, you know, the opportunity to create an urban forest and to bring green space back into the downtown. And that really was part of the, the plan that was originally conceptualized through the aesthetic design guidelines. And then that the design build team is working through as they develop their final um, landscape and planting and seeding plans. So, through that process, we developed a series of different typologies that, that Ken was explaining. And each one of those um, provided coverage that did a couple different things. Um, for one thing, um, the intentional design of, of the mixes and things started to um, create what would appear more natural for a longer period of time so that mm -hmm. what you're seeing looks like it's part of nature. It doesn't look like something that's just overgrown and unkempt. Um, the, the species and the, the seed mixes that were researched and coordinated with NDOT and then the design builder is now trying to finalize um, are very intentional in terms of, of their selection. They were selected for the specific environments along um, the right of way that will result from the, desi the design. So in, in other words, areas that are going to be a little wetter have certain mixes that can be accommodated Places are going to be drier has species that have been designated that that um, will be a little bit more sustainable in those environments. And then I think that that in looking at the concept of that urban forest overall, the typologies will require less overall maintenance to secure that healthy ecosystem across the interchange. So while I would never say that a, a planting concepts are a no maintenance type of strategy. Um, the intention there is that they have been designed to be sustainable for a longer duration of time and with a lower level of, of maintenance. Great, thank you, Ron. Next question, and this one I'm going to actually um, direct to Mohammed and Jeff from Superior Construction. Um, what's curious about what the life expectancy will be for these new roads and bridges, and what's the maintenance plan? Well, I'll handle this. Um, what we've done is, so this project is 
is unlike any project that has been done in Indiana before. Um, the pavement is contingency reinforced concrete pavement, um, which is not a typical pavement section for the state of Indiana. And the bridge decks have stainless steel rebar in the decks. Um, I believe what I've been told is that they expect it to last at least 50 years without any major maintenance required, other than maybe some overlays on some bridge decks as we move forward. Um, so as far as the maintenance plan, I do not know. That is not part of our scope. I will defer to NDOT, and that's what I know. Thanks, Jeff. We can look into the maintenance plan a little bit further um, and answer that in the questions that we post to the website. I don't know that we'll have a definitive plan, but we could give you some ideas. Um, I think the goal with the project was try to minimize maintenance, to try to minimize traffic disruptions. Um, if we're gonna get in there and kind of close this down for a while, try to get in and get the best bang for the buck on, on getting in and trying to minimize maintenance later on. All right, are there any further questions at this point? Okay, I'm not seeing any, so I'm gonna hand it back to Erica. Okay, well, thank you all for joining. Uh, as I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, we're please submit comments regarding the planting plans discussed here to info at norsplit.com. Um, also, the information and the presentation will be located at, on the website at northsplit.com slash landscaping. And if you don't want to email um, information, you can send that att your comments at attention to myself, Erica Johnson, at 111 Monument Circle. And then I will make sure that those get added into the comment log and for the superior and design build team to address. Again, uh, comment period ends Friday, December 10th. Uh, please go out on the website, review the materials discussed today, and provide us your feedback. And with that, the next steps, um, we, like I said at the beginning, there are three other additional virtual public meetings here in November. Uh, the comment pe review period is until December 10th, and then we'll have a follow-up public update meeting on the final plans uh, in early 2022. And then just want to let everybody know the roadway will fully open to motorists in late 2022. And then if there are any other questions besides that are not related to the landscape plans or aesthetics that we talked about today, I did want to let everyone know uh, if you do see something out there to use the NDOT for you, uh, NDOT for you is a comprehensive customer service program. Um, it, it goes, if you can go out on the web at n.4u.com or call 855 n dot for you or send us an email at n.in.gov. That goes to myself and a team of public information group. Uh, it doesn't just go to n dot customer service. We receive all those tickets and help address those along the way. So just wanted to remind everyone that customer service is here. And if you have a question or concern, please send it along. And then also, if, if you're on the website, we also have photo galleries, construction info and maps as far as updated detours, uh, a video gallery. Uh, we just recently did one on thermal blankets and posted that out there, as well as the media room as far as upcoming uh, items that are occurring, traffic shifts that are changing, or uh, just an upcoming uh, winterization prep that the contractor is getting ready to do. So please visit norsplit.com. And then also follow us on social media at North Split, at North Split on Twitter and at ND North Split on Instagram, or you can text 468311 and get the latest information on the North Split project. And with that, thank you all for attending.